This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, Tony Rashmer uh, received her MA uh, from the University of uh, Sydney, and she just actually submitted her dissertation uh, for the University of Sydney uh, in Roman history titled Fruits of Empire, Grain in the Roman Republic. So she's basically a doctor, but I cannot call her Dr. Rushmer because we have to wait, I think, one more month for that. And, uh, and during her dissertation, she also spent, uh, uh, she was also one of the uh, scholar, Coleman Hilton scholar at the British School of Rome in 2022. And uh, exactly, now she is on top of uh, that having just finished her dissertation while she was attending our ANA summer, summer, summer private seminar. She just finished last, uh, last, uh, uh, last week our summer seminar, uh, our summer seminar uh, presenting a project that she'll be sharing with you now. So please welcome, uh, join me in welcoming uh, Tonya Rashmi with us. Thank you. Thank you, Tonya. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lucia, for um, the introduction and, and thank you for the ANS for having me along to present and also having me be a part of the, the seminar. I've sort of learned heaps and I've really, really enjoyed my time here so far. So um, yeah, it's been, been excellent. Um, okay, so I will get going with my paper, which I will just remind myself, let me share the screen, get it back here, okay, oops, come on, perfect, okay, um, so, um, as Lucia has just said, um, my dissertation was on um, grain, coinage and grain, uh, sorry, grain in general, um, and then my project here at the ANS has sort of extended that to specifically looking at um, how that works with coinage and what we can what we can learn from coins and how it might inform our knowledge of the grain supply during the Roman Republic. Okay, so yeah. there we go. Just getting a handle on the technology now. Um, so my project here specifically was looking at coins which might be tied to purchases of grain or efforts to maintain Rome's grain supply, um, which I'll sometimes refer to as the anana, but it basically means the same thing. Um, in particular, there are coins that are labelled XSC um, or sometimes just SC means the same thing. Um, and they're, they're particularly informative, but I do have a couple that, well, I think just one that I've included that doesn't subscribe to that. Um, the idea was to gain a sense of the magnitude of these particular issues relative to other state expenditures. So basically how much are they choosing to spend on, on the grain supply and also test whether the die counts of these issues matches with some known quantities of money that were assigned for specifically maintaining the grain supply that we have from written sources. So, um, XSC. Now, I know that's a bit of a debated topic and it has a specific meaning. What It means something slightly different in the imperial period or it's used far more commonly in the imperial period. Um, in the Republican period, it, it only shows up on some coinage um, starting from the late second century and it basically refers to what means it comes from a resolution of the Senate. And so quite a lot of coins um, from the Republic do have this inscription on them. It's starting, you can see from, uh, actually, no, we don't have the dates on here, but it starts from sort of mid second century. Um, Crawford notes that quite, quite a few more appear during periods of crisis. Um, and basically the idea is that, or the common explanation for them is that they are produced when um, coins beyond the normal amount of coinage assigned for the year need to be produced. Uh, so Crawford says, okay, when they're more common um, in the late Republic because there's lots of crises. And so they have to sort of emergency response mint money 
um, to deal with that more often um, is his sort of argument. Okay, now the first coin, which is sort of the starting point for my project because it's the most interesting, um, is this one here. Um, but I will, it, well, it's, it's one particularly important coin because it tells us exactly what it's for. So it doesn't just tell us, okay, it's from a senatorial decision, but it also tells us that it's um, specifically for the purchase of grain. So that ad fru emu XSC that you can see written on it um, very clearly states what, what this coin was minted for. Um, but before I get too far into this coin, I'll go through a little bit of the history um, to explain why this is so important. So horrible first slide, I'm not going to go through all of this at all. Um, but just to give you a little bit of context for where it's coming from, um, what are the grain distributions? So in 123, uh, Gaius Gracchus brought in a law that meant once a month, um, Roman citizens would be entitled to a certain amount of grain. Now, I've just got this awful slide with a horrible amount of text on it, just to show, I mean, when, you, when I put it all together, it looks like a decent amount, but in fact, this is everything that we have um, that gives information on Gracchus's law, and I can just squeeze it into a single line. So it's a single slide. So it's not actually particularly well um, documented, unfortunately. Um, but what do we know? Okay, they came in in 123. Um, we do get the price specifically. So they're giving grain to the people at a cost of six and a third asses per modius. Um, that's quite a strange sounding price, but it's um, consistent with thereabouts the amount of money that would be deducted from a soldier's pay for their rations. Um, and prior to the re-tariffing of the coinage, it comes out about equal to um, the four, uh, four asses that would be, um, that grain would have been handed out in the sort of late third, early second century at the ends of the Punic War, they sort of handed out large sums of grain um, at that time and four asses per modius um, equates to about the same thing. Um, in later times, everyone is allowed to buy, so each person's allowed to buy five modi, so that equates to about 33 kilograms or um, 73 pounds. Um, we don't actually know that whether that was true of Gaius Gracchus's law, but it's usually assumed to be the amount because um, if you buy five, then you can pay basically two denarii for the whole quantity, um, which makes it much easier than dealing with this sort of six and a third asses amount. Um, the distributions were once a month, and we do know the law was quite controversial and it was um, accused of being quite expensive and draining the treasury. So that's in 123. Now that brings me to Saturninus. So about 20 years later, um, he's, he was a popular tribune following in the model of the Gracchi brothers and particularly Gaius Gracchus who brought in this grain law. And what's also important information is that before um, when, well, he actually held the tribunate twice in 103 and 100, before his tribunate at some time, possibly, um, I think H.V. Mattingly gives 104, um, Badian says 105 or 106, he served as Ostian Quaestor, um, which is a position that um, had a lot of responsibility, or we think had a lot of responsibility over the grain supply um, being a fairly important port city. And he was replaced from his role, or removed from his role and replaced by the princeps senatus, uh, Marcus Aemilius Scaurus. Um, Cicero says that's why he turned to popular politics, because he was so annoyed at being replaced. Um, but he sort of seems to have also gone a fair bit further than the Gracchi brothers. He's implicated in the murder of a consular colleague, and he en ended up stoned in mob violence in late 100. So he's not the friendliest figure out there anyway, um, and come to a fairly violent end. Saturninus proposed lowering the cost of the um, distributions fr uh, from the six and a third asses to 
uh, five sixths of an S. So it's a pretty significant reduction, about an eighth, I think, works out being of the um, previous amount. So um, you could pay one sesterty thereabouts for five whole modi. Um, I've also just they included that's that's one modius filled up with grains. So you can see quite how much it is if you've got five of those. It's practically a wheelbarrow that you'd have to be carrying away. So he proposed this as a law. Um, Caipio, who was serving as the um, urban quaestor, said that, uh, which is a role that's concerned with the money uh, with money in the city, said that the treasury couldn't afford to pay for it, basically. Um, and it seems like some of Saturninus's colleagues attempted to veto his proposal, but he decided to proceed anyway. Um, brought out the ballot boxes, and Caipio was. Um, basically took violent action, disrupted the bridges, threw down the boxes and obstructed the, pro the proposal. And that led to him being put on trial for treason. So the two texts that we have on this actually come from sort of um, definitions or um, advice on, on um, legal arguments as to how Caipio kind of managed to define the terms around this trial. So, What's quite important here um, to note as well is how the specific way in which Caipio defended himself. So what he was accused of is this term maestas, um, which basically means diminishing the majesty of the Roman Republic, um, akin to kind of treason. But he said, uh, which in doing by sort of disrupting uh, voting, which is a key part of the Roman Republican sort of institution, he is sort of diminished or committed treason against the populace. But he argues that in fact, his, his actions preserved the tre um, treasury. So he's actually saved the um, saved Rome from this kind of treason or, or preserved the magistracy. Um, and very, in particular, he um, really pushes this sort of he's defended the treasury. So just keep that in mind for later. Now, finally, to get to this coin. So um, I will swap and I can show you the coin actually on the camera because I have it here. We swap and share. Awesome. Okay. So this is the coin here. Um, now I'll start actually this side up. Now, it features, this is Saturn here, um, and then we've got the names of the two quaestors who have issued it. So we've got Piso and Caipio along the side, and then just slightly cut off, but that's a cue to advertise their position. So we know this coin has to be from the year that um, Saturninus pres preserved his law, because we know that's the same year that Caipio served as quaestor. Um, now, on the reverse, we get this particularly interesting image. So we already know the legend indicates that the coin was minted for the purchase of grain um, on behalf of the senatorial decision. Um, but you can also see we've got two grain ears either side and then the two figures sitting on a bench, presumably conducting the actual distribution itself. Um, the chair that they're on is the subcellium, which is the chair that the quaestors would have sat on. So it sort of does look like we've got a representation of the magistrates themselves here. Um, okay, now I'll go back to my PowerPoint again. That's okay, we're all good there. Excellent. Okay, now other relevant information is that the servile war of 104 to 100 um, would have, well, is obviously contemporaneous with this coin, um, and it would probably cause issues with the usual supply of food. We know Sicily was a big provider of grain to Rome, um, particularly by this, this period in time. They'd sort of had it there to rely on for a close to 100 years now, um, and Rome was getting bigger and bigger and really needed this um, import food to rely on. So any fighting in Sicily is going to be fairly uh, detrimental for Rome's food supply. Um, now, the coin itself, 
I've got it down there as 103 or 100. Um, I, I prefer 103. I did go and trace this all the way back. Um, Crawford dates it to 100, but he's basically dated it off literary evidence um, because there's sort of a bit of a debate around which year Saturninus proposed this law and therefore which year this coin should be dated to. Um, there's no, the hoard evidence doesn't really clearly say one way or the other. Um, so I, anyway, I'm, I'm more persuaded by 103 being a sensible period for various reasons that I won't get into. Now, um, either way, both uh, both years would have been affected by this this war going on in Sicily, so we can expect shortage in the food supply both times. Uh, now, Saturn is also the god that is um, in charge of the treasury, or in fact, the treasury itself is um, was in the temple of Saturn. So when Caipio says, "I defended the treasury." this image of Saturn seems to quite clearly connect to what he's done, or it, it's a clear reference to Saturn there. Um, it also may well be act as a reaction to Saturninus. So we know Saturn, Saturninus on his coins used Saturn as a kind of name pun. Um, the dating of Saturninus's coins is also a little bit fraught. Um, I gave this paper, well, a similar version of this paper last week, um, and Professor Yarrow brought this up actually um, quite helpfully to me. And so there's a possibility that Saturninus was minting after this coin was minted. Um, so either you can see this coin as a sort of attempt to reclaim Saturn as the treasury from Saturninus, or Saturninus trying to really stamp his mark over Saturn in response to this coin. Either way, I, I, I think the, there's a clear reference to, to Saturn going on and Saturninus. Um, now, what I've done here is basically um, used the, um, uh, the Schaefer binders and the sort of material provided by the Roman Republican Dye Project uh, to tally up um, and come up with an estimate of how much, how many um, dyes there were originally and what the output of this issue might have been. Um, and as far as it goes, um, well, firstly, it uh, looks significantly higher amount than the, um, the die count given by Crawford, which is helpful to know. Um, and he's tallied up by the obverse, so um, I don't think he's actually studied the, the reverse side or most of them he hasn't given a you can see he hasn't labeled the reverse so he hasn't done the study too clearly there um, but yeah it comes out to quite a quite a large amount so um, estimated dye is about 162 and that given the um, I've just throughout used the usual ratio of sort of 20 twenty thousand for an obverse die and 15,000 for a reverse die. That's just to really gain a sense of relative magnitude because that's what many other studies use. Um, I'm not gonna kind of get too into whether that's the right amounts just yet, but it will, um, gives you a sense of what it is relative to the others. So this comes out using that amount, it comes out as 3.24 million. Um, now, this I've, I've conveniently stolen from um, uh, Lucia's study um, and, and Professor Yarrow's study as well. So um, this is looking at the kind of where it sits, shows you approximately where it sits uh, relative to some of the other coinages. So particularly in here, it's kind of sitting, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a reasonably big issue. So the next coin that I'm going to have a look at is this one here. Now, um, I will again swap to the coin camera if possible. Let's do that. And okay. So that's all good. All right. So you can see already, I'll, actually I'll put the two side by side first. So this is the coin issued by Piso and Caipio, and this one on the left is the new one. So you can see they're very, very clearly um, 
using the same imagery. Now, this one is from 86, thereabouts. Um, on the reverse rather than Saturn, we've got, um, this is a sort of depiction of Keras. You can see a very, very nice, um, oh, very nice sort of uh, grain, grain ears in her hair. And you can see Eid Pleb on there. So plebeian Eid Isles that it's issued by. Um, and then on this side, you can see the names of the issues. So the M for Marcus has worn off a little bit, but we've got Fannius and Lucius um, Cretonius right there. So we've got the two issuers listed. Now we'll swap back again. Again, there we go. Swap back to my PowerPoint again. If that's okay. Awesome, nice. Okay, so um, that one there has a slightly different legend on it. So actually, that's the one thing I didn't point out um, on the actual coin, but it, it has the um, PA on it instead rather than the XSC. So I'll come back to that, but there are two suggestions as to what this might mean. Um, Crawford sees it as, as fitting into the series of Argentum Publicum. So there's quite a lot of coins that are marked AP or, uh, sorry, PA or variants of that. Sorry, AP, make sure I get it the right way. AP. Um, so this is a little bit unusual and it's the only one that has it PA, um, which has led to Mattingly um, saying that it refers to pecunia assignata or pecunia attributa instead. So, but anyway, I'll come back, come back to that idea. I just want to give you a little bit of background. So before this has happened, we've skipped realize ahead sort of about 20 years from Saturninus again. So this is right right at the start of the Roman Civil War. Um, so Sulla had already come through, captured Rome, and then headed off to go and deal um, with Mithridates in the east. And Marius decided to come in and retake over Rome. So before he actually gets to Rome, he's come from Etruria down and then joins forces with Kina, who's just been kicked out from the city as one of the consuls for the year, um, and some other, other sort of generals that are around. And they join forces, but it's not usually reported um, as a sort of their strategies um, as a food blockade, but Appian quite clearly um, and in detail describes how they did blockade the food supply. So you can see, I've sort of marked it on the map, um, where they position themselves, but um, they basically surround it and they surround it very particularly along the Tiber. So the Tiber, Rome is sort of, oh, I want to say about 10 kilometers inland, um, and it relies on the Tiber River to bring any imports up from Ostia. Um, and as it seems from, from this description here, they're also relying on... Um, relying on sort of grain coming down from sort of fertile regions further up in Italy um, because they, they build bridges either side of the Tiber of Rome so that nothing can pass down the river and into the city. Um, now, after that, Marius then um, goes to Ostia, which we know is an important um, port for bringing in food, captures the city and then um, Kina takes an army up to Ariminum. You can see right up on the top right marked there. Um, probably to stop any forces coming down. It's the Via Flaminia, I think, that, that they've got to sort of preserve up there. But there's also, that would be the one port to um, the Po River Valley, uh, which is another big fertile area. So if they're worried about food supply, that's also another important road to block off. Um, then, just in case you weren't convinced that's what he's doing, um, he then headed south to Antium, which is another important port, and then basically heads up. You can see my Marius moving around, moving up the Appian Way um, through Aricia and capturing towns where um, 
Appian specifically says where they have sort of granaries where where grain is stored for the city of Rome. So he's very clearly tried to stop any food getting into the the city. Um, and then we know, so once he does arrive, that's basically the first thing that gets the Senate to um, negotiate with um, this sort of approaching angry force of people um, because the Senate are quite disturbed about the fact that they can't get in, um, get grain into the city and they're worried what would happen if there's a delay. And so they go out and, and speak to speak to Kinner trying to negotiate. So <clears throat> that brings us back to this coin. So that all happens in 87. Um, and then we get this coin issued very shortly afterwards. Now, I suspect the reasoning behind that is because they just so aggressively attacked the food supply of the population. Um, and that's really a really something that the local population enjoys having their food supply cut off. Um, it was quite important for the new um, ruling group within Rome to quite quickly address this food needs. Um, and adding to that, civil war is always disruptive for any kind of food supply. And particularly this civil war um, meant one of, the, one of the three main provinces that would supply grain to Rome. Um, so that's Sicily, Sardinia and Africa. Um, so Africa throughout pretty well the entire time that um, Marius or the Marian forces or Marian's kind of allies are in charge of Rome, Africa seems to be controlled by someone who's not friendly to them. So they, they won't have access to any African supplies um, for a large amount of the time. Uh, so grain was probably short and they needed to make quite a lot of efforts to win over the population again. So back to the coin. Now you can see um, specifically, actually, let me just go back real quick to the one that has the two. Oh no, I'll swap, if we can swap to the coin camera again, if that would be, can I do this? Excellent, thank you. Okay, so I already mentioned we've got a change from um, Saturn on the obverse to Keras um, or Ceres on the obverse. Now, Saturn obviously played an important role in saying, okay, he's linked to the linked to the Irarium and the treasury. Um, Keras might be an obvious choice. She's the goddess of grain. Uh, but there's also um, an important kind of plebeian connection there. So she is um, the goddess who the plebeian aediles would run the, the games for. She has these sort of ties to, um, to the plebeians already. Um, and her temple is supposed to have been set up in a fairly kind of, well, possibly plebeianish way. Um, now, what we have here as well, so where, where the differences are, is in that absence of the XSC or this replacement with the PA. Now, I think from the iconography and the timing, it seems very clear that these coins are in fact intended for a very similar purpose, i.e. to purchase grain. Um, and that's why they've recalled the same iconography, especially since in 86, they probably did need to buy grain. Um, but the changes that they've made are sort of as interesting as the, as the similarities. So this swap to the PA rather than the XSC seems to me like a fairly conscious choice to sort of plebeianize the, the coin or, or to have a level of distance from the Senate. So they're not wanting the XSC because there's this sort of been this quite fraught relationship with the Senate previously um, and they're much more advertising their own positions. So on the side of this one as well, the fact that they, it gives their names as the plebeian Edals as well, um, kind of really reinforcing their connection to the population um, in their provision of grain. 
Okay, no, I will go back to my PowerPoint. Oh, uh, no, I won't. I won't. Sorry. Just show the last. Yes. Okay. Now I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Perfect. Um. Okay. Now this one, very conveniently, um, I didn't have to do the tally using uh, all the notebooks because it's already been done by the Roman Republican Die Project. So um, saved my eyes a little bit. Um, by just getting to kind of copy paste that from, from there. Um, but this one is a significantly smaller output than the, um, the Piso Kaipio one. Um, possibly it's harder to sort of get the grain anyway in 80, um, 86, so it might, might be that they don't, don't have the ability to buy quite as much as they needed to. But anyway, it's, it's, it's a fair bit smaller. Okay, so this is going to be, I'll bring you to the next one. So just to jump down another 30 something years, um, this is the next most clearly connected um, coin to the grain supply. So you can see there's, I've actually got two here, but they're both issued by Faustus Sulla um, and they both have an SC on them. So I might again, I might again swap to the coin camera and I'll put both of those up as well. Excellent. Okay. Nice. Okay, actually. So you can see on both both of these we've got the nice SC listed on them there and just there. Um, but more interestingly is the reverse design. So you can see on this one, we've got the kind of three trophies um, and this one has three wreaths there, there and there and one big wreath. Um, and then the little piece from the prow of the ship um, on that side and then a nice, really nice little grainy on this one. Um, now, both of these are essentially, well, at least the three trophies and the three wreaths um, and the one big wreath are all reference, referencing the same thing. Um, Pompey is supposed to have had these three trophies as a signet ring, um, but basically it's referencing the three triumphs that Pompey the Great had. Um, and then specifically this little prow, uh, sorry, the piece of the, the back part of the ship, um, not the prow, um, is referencing probably his piracy command, though I think Crawford puts it down as, as belonging to the grain, his grain command as well, but no, it could be either. And this one um, here is obviously referencing um, the position that he's given as um, sort of being in charge of the Cura Anonai, so the um, care for the grain supply in Rome. It's a special commission that he's given, awarded in 57. Um, and the globe in the centre is sort of this control of the whole globe that well his piracy commission was su supposed to have given him and he sort of had quite ex quite unprecedented powers with both the piracy commission and with the the grain commission that followed um almost 10 years later so um let's go back to my powerpoint so yes they both they both very clearly refer to um pompey and various happenings of Pompey. And the fact, the fact that it's issued in 56 is very interesting. So, um, here we go. So we know from that in 56, so the, the year following um, the year that Pompey gave, was given this commission, the Senate awarded him an additional amount, sum of money to continue his work um, as grain commissioner. Um, so the amount that they give is this 40 million sesterti, which works out to about 10 million denarii. Um, now, obviously, the interesting question for us is, does this issue of coinage match up with the amount of money that we know Pompey was awarded in this year? Um, it's conveniently something that's already been looked at um, by uh, Lucia and, and uh, Professor Yarrow as well. So. I've kind of 
gone and done my my own um, calculations as well, but pretty much um, where it comes out to is it's not not that it doesn't you it's quite difficult to get it to the sum um, of 10 million that you're looking for um, so you can see one issue is about 1 million the second one is even smaller than that and that's based on the sort of um, 150,000 no sorry 15,000 um, for a reverse issue um, you can see we've got some um, the Carbon and Yarrow article has sort of added up some ways where you can possibly try and get towards um, the amount that's listed in um, in Cicero's letter, but essentially it's quite difficult to get to that get to that sum unless it's combined with some issues of some other SC coins around the same time, um, and even then you're sort of assuming a reasonably high output. So. What does that mean? Um, well, quite possibly they're not using, they're not actually having to mint every single um, amount that he has been offered to use. So he might be able to kind of um, transfer money in a sort of more, not, not exactly paper money, but in a kind of written, written way that it's sort of dealt with through accounting rather than through actual minted coins. Um, or, he, or it's possibly that it's a sort of a sum of ones together. Or he's got some as well because there would have been a large amount of the annual um, budget, Roman budget, already um, assigned towards dealing with the grain supply, whether they're counting some of that money towards what he's doing. It's possible. So um, the next coin that I will go on to Apologies, but I'm going to jump back in time um, because this is one that's slightly more tenuously linked to um, Rome's grain supply, but I think there is a good case to be made for including this as sort of at least of, of a lot of relevance to the grain supply. So um, I'll swap again to a coin. There we go. Um, so if I can just go to the coin camera again, okay, awesome. So this one here, you can see we've got this GPR, which is usually um, put down as being the Genius of the Populus Romanus, so the kind of figure of the Roman people. And then on this side, you've again got the orb um, representing the globe and then an X S C over the edge and then it's the issue are just there. Now um, the issuer of both this coin and a second one which I will again I'm going to swap back to my PowerPoint um, this coin and this very similar one um, have been linked by an article, a fairly recent article by Simon Day to um, a commission given to Mark Antony's father in the 70s to go and deal with piracy. Um, so where this relates to the grain supply is that in 75, there was a fairly significant crisis. Um, so we know the consuls for the year um, Cotta and Octavius were chased along the Via Sacra by an angry mob and they were, um, they sort of had to come out and, and um, Cotta gives this speech recorded in Sallust where he's essentially sort of begging for or offering to dedicate his life um, to sort of appease the people or deal with this problem and he, he gives sort of some reasons why this problem has happened. Now you could kind of there are cynical readings of this speech, but it does seem like there's quite a lot that um, Cotter in particular, but the consuls for the year seem to have done in response to fixing this, this sudden shortage. So one of the big issues that we knew um, caused the disruption in the food supply was piracy, which 
is where this coin and, and the commission, um, Antonius's commission comes in. Um, there is also an attempt to sort of acquire more money, um, more funds for the state. So there were a few quaestors sent to various places, in particular to Cyrene, um, to take up the bequest there. Um, and Cyrene, it's important to note, a very important um, grain growing area. So they're sort of adding resources to the state. Um, the very immediate response meant that Hortensius, the orator who was um, the one of the ediles for the year, handed out grain quite quickly. The grain he's handing out was probably grain that Cicero had gathered up within um, within Sicily, where he was serving as quaestor and had sent to Rome, um, which he thought would be to great acclaim. But unfortunately for him, no one seemed to really be aware of what he had done. But um, he was quite proud of it initially. Um, <clears throat> and then in 74, uh, we also had uh, Marcus Sayus, who's sort of this previously kind of unknown figure, shows up as an edile and hands out a huge, huge volume of grain at very, very low prices. So um, a lot of this seems to be a response to how serious things got with the riot in 75. Um, now, if this coin can be tied back to that effort to deal with problems in um, Rome's grain supply and particularly to this, this piracy commission, um, that would be quite important. Uh, it's also significant that it is quite large. So it's even larger than the, the um, Piso Caipio issue. So it's about 5 million um, counted by the obverse dies. The second one that is similar there um, is a little bit, uh, a fair bit smaller. Um, yeah, a fair bit smaller, but they're sort of very clearly, the two coins sort of seem to be reasonably connected because we assume this is also the Genius of the Populus Romanus um, being crowned by victory there. Um, interestingly, the issue of this coin is probably, um, well, he's definitely related to one of the quaestors, the quaestor that was sent off to um, Cyrene to take up the bequest there. So there's a sort of tie in um, with the family as well. And then the final coin, which I won't really get into, but I have tallied up, is this one here. Um, I can show it very quickly on the screen because I think this, this will look a bit clearer. Um, yes, okay. Um, but yeah, you can see once again the SC on that one, and it's from a figure who seems to be connected. So it's um, Titus Vettius Sabinus. Um, he seems to be connected to um, Gaius Verres as possibly a brother-in-law or cousin-in-law, some kind of connection there. And Verres had a job doing various things with the grain supply in Sicily that um, whilst he sort of is accused of being fairly corrupt there. So the corn ear or grain ear that we've got there um, and his name and the XSC suggests maybe there's, there's another connection there, but that's something I sort of, it's, it's far more tenuous, but I've included in the count anyway. Um, so that pretty, pretty well sums up where I've got to so far with the project, I am still working on um, telling these things up. Um, but at least with the um, this sort of big issue in the 70s and then the Piso Caipio coin um, does suggest that quite a lot of um, coins were or um, effort was made towards providing for the grain supply. So thank you. I'll unmute myself. Thank you very much, uh, Tonya, for this thought-provoking uh, uh, presentation. Um, I open now the field to question. I don't know if there are uh, questions for uh, Tonya. Otherwise, I will, of course, ask questions myself. I don't see any uh, questions. Uh, uh, in the chat. Um, so, uh, could you 
tell us a little bit more um, what is the, let's say, most uh, recent scholarship? I mean, I just ask you to uh, summarize it here about uh, what uh, represents like these X uh, SC, because as you say, this X SC on coinage uh, is, of course, uh, rather common in some way, and uh, and it appears also on issues that are not and have not been related by you, of course, to grain supply. Yeah, so it's um, so it's a bit of a tricky one because it shows up so often, um, but. There's not really a, a super clear answer as to exactly exactly what it means, other than sort of Crawford's suggestion, which sort of I've I've actually um, spoken to various people, not numismatists, so perhaps um, that's that's part of the reason. But about how Crawford's definition is actually in some ways quite hard to follow exactly what he's saying um, because it's such a complicated issue but yeah so essentially it, it seems to be something that's issued outside of the normal um, money that the Triumviri Manitale would have produced um, at the start of the year so they get given a certain amount that they're supposed to be they're supposed to be doing and at some point they need to issue more um there does seem to be some though certainly not on all but um a correlation between often having a different magistrates um so not one of the triumviri um in conjunction with these xsc coins so you've got quaestors issuing it or um uh, one of the examples i had was the plebeian edals issuing it rather than the the triumviri um but yeah, I think I think the the clearest example is actually this this helpful um, RRC three thirty that that says very precisely exactly what that one was made for. Um, yeah, because that's sort of. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for uh, Sonia? Because I have uh, some of them for. Her. I mean, and as I say, this is uh, uh, this is important. This is a very important project, still uh, in uh, theory, let's say. So, um, so this is just feedback uh, uh, in view of uh, uh, of the future. Eventually, of course, Estonia, as we have already uh, discussed. Now, um, you um, you quite usefully put there uh, these quantification, let's say, or these numbers uh, that uh, were actually, of course, uh, identified by uh, Schaefer, mostly mm -hmm. by Schaefer, with some actually contribution directly from Dr. Alice Sharpless, who's actually uh, with us today, which is our, our RDP uh, postdoctoral curatorial uh, uh, assistant. So, um, and you said this is small, of course, you, you talk about, uh, uh, you could talk about basically the baseline there from production. And so, so what uh, do you think that these numbers, I mean, are contributing to the picture you want to draw about uh, uh, the connection between uh, these issues uh, and grain supply and i mean i know that this is a very complex question sorry mm -hmm. um I, so i think a lot of what i was interested in in my thesis is um because there's a general idea um i'd say most strongly put by Gansey in his text on um which is sort of the one of the main main volumes that people go to for looking at the grain supply in Rome, um, that the Senate largely isn't particularly interested or that, that Rome's leadership are not particularly interested um, in managing the grain supply. Um, and it's kind of this problem that 
that only gets dealt with as a sort of party politics, um, very partisan issue. Um, and I think a lot of what I've worked on, particularly with this sort of crisis in, in the 70s, um, is that there's, there is actually quite a lot of effort um, from all sorts of um, people um, all across kind of wherever you want to assign them as optimates, populares, that wherever, um, to, um, to sort of manage Rome's grain supply and make sure that this is working. Because it, it's really, it becomes, and, and 75 shows it actually becomes a sort of existential threat. Like it, if you're getting the consuls being chased by an angry mob, they, it's, it's just something that, that the population has to has to have a decent food supply. So I think that's um, where it's interesting for me is showing, okay, if they are producing large sums of coins in order, particularly with this 330 issue, to buy grain, um, particularly from someone like Caipio, who is not at all associated with the sort of popul popularist side of things. He, he's known as sort of being even conservative for conservative, within conservative kind of streams. Um, so if he's even involved with making sure that they're providing grain when they need to um, in times of crisis, then I think that's, that shows actually there is much more um, investment across, uh, yeah, across the sort of Romans, Rome's leadership. So that, that's what, where I'm most interested in. Thank you so much. I mean, I have a question. I don't know if Eric wants to ask, but I have a question here in the chat from Warren Asti. Mm -hmm. um, are these uh, issues to actually pay for or to advertise paying for grain? And if they are to pay for grain, are they found more frequently in the grain producing regions? Because what okay. <laughs> Now, th so that's, um, that's a really good question, um, and it's something I haven't looked into too much just yet. Um, the only one that I did look, at, look into it with is that, um, that one that I got to just at the end that I said might be connected to um, Ver Gaius Verres. Now, none of them are found in Sicily. So the idea that that coin was used to directly buy grain in Sicily um, can't really be supported by the, the evidence. So maybe it's being used to provide stuff for Veres that he needs in order to go to um, Sicily. There's often sort of, I mean, with Pompey, he would have required a lot of ships on his command, all sorts of things that you need to buy ahead of it. Um, and also I'd argue that they're actually getting a lot more grain from Italy, um, and particularly that's the grain that they actually have to buy um, because there are sort of big fertile areas in Italy, but they can't take as much of it in tax as they would be doing in Sicily and Sardinia and Africa. So um, you'd, I'd be expecting or hoping to find them in Italy, but that's something I, I need to kind of get on to looking at as well. So thank you. Um, I don't know, Eric wants to ask a question or not? Otherwise, I have another question here. So, uh, Jean McPherson asks here, are the grain ears related uh, on to the uh, 211 BC sextons and the grain ears on the denarii you show? So there is a connection between the grain ears on, uh, let's say, the two hundred. so the 211 uh, BC sextants, so the, the Sicilian ones, let's say, mm -hmm. and the grain ears on the denarii you showed. So is there a connection? Um, possibly. So I think I, I as part of my um, PhD um, dissertation, I looked at basically, I went through and looked at every coin from the Republic that has anything on it that might be connected to grain. So that um, the most obvious connection is actually rather than the grain ear, which could possibly mean a few things, is if I've got if you've got a little modius on the coin, very clearly looks like it's to do with the distribution of grain, because that's the only reason that you have the little the little modius. But the um, the next most common is, or the next most sort of indicative that um, of something to do with the grain supply or grain distribution seems to be 
that gray in here. Um, they do tend to all look pretty similar. Now with the ones, the Sicilian ones, um, I suspect there is just because um, Sicily has that sort of strong connection with firstly Keris, um, the goddess of goddess of grain, but then also because grain is so important um, to Rome and it's so abundant in Sicily, you kind of get this, this grain as acting as a sort of shorthand. I think Professor Yarra suggests that in her book that it's kind of acts acts a little bit as a shorthand for um, sort of Sicily itself. Um, but there is that interplay there with, with, with Sicily being such an important source of grain. So yeah, it's, um, I would say it is connected, but maybe not directly connected. Um, they, they tend to look, there's lots of grain ears on all sorts of coinage and they tend to look very similar um, all the time. It's quite consistently represented. Are there other questions for Tonya? Um, okay, here we have a lot of uh, compliments for you, Tonya, great. 